Hello mathematicians, thank you for joining me today as we do some card counting. In particular, we're going to count the number of ways that we can get different hands in poker, being straights and flushes. Before we start counting the number of straights and flushes, I first want to just determine how many total poker hands there are going to be in a five card poker hand. So in this case, what we're going to notice is that, well, we're going to start off with 52 cards. For those 52 cards, we're going to have 13 numbers or faces, namely ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. And then we're going to have four suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. And so each of those 13 faces and four different suits is going to give us a total of 52 cards. Now, when we deal out a poker hand, you will get all five cards. You are allowed to shuffle them up however you want in order to turn it into the best hand possible. So the idea here is that if we're counting these the way that we did with combinations and permutations is that, well, what's happening is we have 52 cards to choose from. I'm going to pick five at a time. Notice that since I'm allowed to change the order to make the hand I want, the order does not matter. But I also, repetition is not allowed. So what we're going to get is that the total number of poker hands is going to be a combination of 52 cards five at a time. So the total number of hands is going to be 52 choose five, which is approximately 2.6 million. So that means the total number of poker hands possible is gonna be approximately 2.6 million. Now we want to count the number of flushes that are possible. And so what is a flush? Well, a flush is a hand where I have five cards, all of the same suit. For a flush, the numbers don't matter, just the suit. So for example, I could have five cards that are all hearts, all diamonds, all clubs, or all spades. So now if I'm going to count the total number of ways that I can do this, I want to see how many possibilities there are, how many outcomes there are that end up being a flush. So as we do this, what we want to do is make choices along the way. So if I'm going to have a flush, I think about, well, what would make a distinct option? And the things that are going to make distinct options are, well, each one's going to be different if I have a different number in there. So if any one number is different, I have a different hand. If the suit is different, then I have a different hand. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually first going to choose the suit for my flush. And then I'm going to choose the numbers allowed in my hand. And since I'm making two choices, choice one and choice two, if I want the total number of choices, I'm going to end up multiplying these together. So in that way, I would say, well, how many suits can I choose? Well, there are four total suits. Since all of the cards have to be the same suit, I have one choice. And so I would have four choose one suits or a total of four different suits to choose. So once I've picked a suit, I know that all of my cards have to be the same suit, so I have four total choices there. Now when I think about the numbers, notice that, well, I can pick anything from ace through a king, and so any of those cards can show up in my hand. Now, I'm going to need five of those, so what I need is five out of 13. And so if I think about this, does the order matter? Well, the order I, met, I get them in doesn't matter because, again, I can rearrange them however I like. But repetition, is that allowed? Well, no, because I can't have two aces of spades, for example, or two three of clubs. So what I have is I'm going to have 13 cards to choose from after I choose my suit. And I have to pick five of them. So the total number of ways to do that is going to be 13 choose five. Now, if we want to find this number, we can just say four times, well, 13 choose five is 13 factorial over 13 minus five factorial is eight factorial times five factorial. And we're gonna end up with, just using our calculators to do this, 5,148 distinct hands that result in a flush for poker. So now we've counted the number of flushes and I wanna move on and try to count the number of straights that I can be dealt in a five card hand of poker. In the same way we did before, we're going to think about suits, and we're going to think about numbers. In this case, I'm going to choose my numbers first, and then I'm going to choose the suit for each of my cards. And then if I take the number of ways I can choose numbers and the number of ways I can take suits and multiply them together, I'll get the total number of straights possible in a five-card hand. Now, 
we should go over a straight. What is a straight? Well, it means I have five cards in a row numerically. So for example, I could have a two, three, four, five, six, and the cards can be any suit they like. Um, I can also have an ace, two, three, four, five, or I could have a nine, 10, jack, queen, king. So again, we're gonna, as for counting numbers in row, we're gonna go 10, then jack, then queen, then king. And we can also have a 10, jack, queen, king, ace, so I can treat ace as high and as low when I am counting out for straights. Now, in that way, what I wanna think is, well, if I know the numbers, there's really, the only choices I really have is either I can pick the lowest number or the highest number. So if I say this number is the lowest number, we know exactly what the rest of the numbers are. If I say this one's the highest, we know exactly what the numbers are. And so all we really have here is we can choose one of the numbers and then the rest will be given. Now, the total number of cards are going to be 13, but I want to think about are all 13 of those possible as the lowest card, let's say. Well, ace can be the lowest because I can get ace, two, three, four, five. Two can be the lowest. Three can be the lowest. And if I go up to nine, we already kind of went out there, and ten was jack, queen, king, ace, so I got five cards out. But if I try to start with the jack as my lowest, I get jack, queen, king, ace, and then I run out of cards. I've only got four. I can't wrap around to get a two to get a straight, so I run out and I can't actually have a straight with the jack as the lowest card. Also, I can't have a straight with the queen as the lowest card or the king as the lowest card. So when I'm counting these, what I can get is I can get my eights, or I can have a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So any one of these can be my lowest card. So the total number of choices I have, well, I have ten choices for the number of my cards. Once I pick that, say five, I know the rest of the numbers are six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, again here, it's important that order doesn't matter because if order did matter, well, I can get a nine and then a five and then a seven, then a six, then an eight, and I would still have my five through nine, but we're gonna think, okay, well, we're gonna rearrange that to get still five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there will be 10 distinct options as opposed to all the number of ways that you can get five, six, seven, and eight coming in in different orderings. So we end up with just 10 ways to choose a number. Now, once we have a suit, what we have is, well, if I know five is my lowest, I know I have a five, six, seven, eight, and a nine, so that's already chosen. All I have left to do is choose the suits for each of those. So the five can be a suit, the six can be a suit, the seven can be a suit, the eight can be a suit, and the nine can be a suit. So since I'm filling these in, even though we said the way that the cards are dealt doesn't matter, when we're choosing suits, the order actually does matter because we've signed we have a five, six, seven, eight, nine, for example or I have a lowest, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So what we need to say is, okay, well, the order matters. Is repetition allowed? Well, can I have a five of hearts, a six of hearts, and something else down here? Well, yeah, that's okay too. So we have order matters and repetition is allowed. So if we use our counting techniques, that's just going to be, well, the number of choices I have are four choices. I'm gonna choose five times. So I'm gonna have four to the fifth total options for the way they choose suits. Now that I've chosen my number in my suit, my hand is completely determined. So all I'm gonna do is multiply this. I think I get 10 times 1,024, as there will be 10,240 distinct ways to get a straight in a five card hand of poker. Now that we know how many straights and how many flushes there are, what we're gonna look at is how many straights or flushes are there. So that is, if I'm given a hand, how many different ways can I either get a straight or a flush? So now when we're counting up things like this, we notice that we're counting up the set of all straights, union the set of all flushes to give us the total number or cardinality of a set of a union. So what we know is that using the addition property, this is gonna be the number of straights, and then we're gonna add the number of flushes. But then if we do that, Notice that in here we're counting ones that are both straights and flushes. Here we're counting ones that are both straights and flushes. So in order to get a correct number, those were double counted, so we subtract them off. And so something that is a straight and a flush is called a straight flush. So therefore, if I want to find the total number of straights or flushes, 
I would take the number of straights, which we already have, the number of flushes, which we already have, and subtract off the number of straight flushes, which we should find out. All right, so how many straight flushes are there? Well, if I go back to what I have been doing, I'm going to have to pick a suit, and I'm going to have to pick the numbers for the suits. And so if I look at that, for a straight flush, what we have now is five cards numerically in a row, such as two, three, four, five, six, but they're all going to be the same suit now. So if we think back to when we were choosing flushes, we needed all of them to be the same suit. So what we had was we had four choices for the suit. Now because they're straights, we get to choose the lowest number, and the total possibilities there was 10. So what we get is the total number of straight flushes is going to be exactly 4 times 10 is 40. So there are 40 ways to get a straight flush in a 5 card hand of poker. Now, if we fill in what we have, we know that the straights were 1,240 plus the flushes were 5,148 minus the straight flushes. And so then putting that together, I get... 15,348 unique hands that are either a straight or a flush. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.